let's say, um, I'm trying to think of how do I do this short amount. Um, let's say uh, there, there is a token out there that is a predictions market. Um, and there's one called Augur and there's one called Gnosis. I think both of them are different prediction markets. And let's say you're an engineer um, that wants to build you know, an options trading platform on the blockchain or a uh, uh, sports betting website on the blockchain. You see that, oh cool, they're you know, releasing the availability of this new technology. Um, I want to participate in that ICO. I want to buy some tokens because I know what I'm going to build on top of that platform is going to add a lot of value to that platform and add a lot of value to those tokens and I'm going to be owning those tokens. So it creates this really virtuous cycle. Some people see it as this as a virtuous cycle that you could, uh, theoretically, you could be, uh, you raise money on a certain kind of token, uh, you pay your employees with that token, and then they buy their things with that token. Uh, that's sort of the purest uh, crypto dream. Um, but then some people look at it as, as a sort of upside down IPO where, oh, instead of you know, a company getting built and built and built and then sort of proving itself for years and years and getting to profitability and then going IPO, uh, this is more like the Kickstarter model. Like, hey, let's all speculate. Um, we're gonna invest in the ICO uh, very quickly with very little friction um, and then sort of hope it all works out. And right now it feels very speculative, but we need people to start building cool things. Um, on the various technologies that are being developed. How many people know what an ICO is? Okay, a handful. Pretty good. That's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyone else to add on to that? Yeah, that's a good, good summary. Is, is there, if someone wants to pursue that model or explore that further device for navigating it, how would you even start to, to explore it? <laughs> I'll just back to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's become a very real funding model to the point where there have been companies that we've seen, um, you know, six months ago pitching us their business that are now saying, "Oh wait, we don't need venture capital. We're going to raise uh, on a token offering." So they are now going out, and there are companies. There was one that was able to raise uh, twenty-five million dollars in nineteen minutes. So think about how long that would take you on Sand Hill Road. Um, I think longer than 19 minutes. And then there was one, I think that was like 20 something seconds, the, the basic attention token more recently. So it's, uh, there's a, I mean, right now it is a lot of speculation. There are a lot of people who invested early in Bitcoin or invested early in Ethereum and are, you know, multimillionaires in crypto and they want to sort of pay it forward um, and sort of invest in the next thing. And so there's a little bit of that happening, but uh, ideally, you know, we're going to have to start evaluating these like companies like we would evaluate any other startup. Um, you know, a, a company that doesn't have a product raising $25 million in 19 minutes seems like it might, there might be something wrong with that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. There's going to, the ones that will be the most successful are the ones that build a product. You know, do it just like a, just like a startup. You bootstrap it as far as you possibly can. You say, I'm going to raise X amount in my uh, coin offering. Uh, you don't need to raise fifty million dollars. You don't need to raise twenty-five million dollars, and uh, you know you just sort of govern yourself 